everyone, and we're back. Do we think we uh, talked about that last item uh, enough, the well, rehabilitation? We uh, pretty much wrapped it up. Areas? I just want to give a lot of credit to John, he John yeah. Heisenbuttle yeah. and the rest of his group for going in because they're concentrating um, on private lands where it probably wouldn't be able to get done without this money coming in. And uh, what they're going to do is going to, uh, stop all of that silt and sedimentation ending up down in the Mokalmi Basin and in the Mokalmi River. Uh, East Bay Mud, I think, is going to be supportive of this effort because they want clean water, and they get most of their water out of that Mokalmi watershed area. So, well, let's hope East Bay Mud is supportive uh, with the amount of water they get out of it. Okay, I guess we don't need any more good <clears throat> farmland down in the Delta. Right. Uh, the next item, you know, we don't want a bunch of new rules and regulations for Amador. At the same time, we want to control our own destiny, too. And we don't want people raping our countryside for the benefit of uh, other areas. This item ran through our land use committee, which is myself and Supervisor Boitano. It has to do with um, interpretation or application of county codes regarding the mm. capture or extraction and transport of groundwater on a wholesale basis. So as it sits right now, people can bottle, take water out of the ground, bottle it, and transport it out of the county. What we don't want is people doing massive draining of our groundwater basin and then hauling the water out of county and bottling it you someplace know, it's else. It's usually when people become outrageous in a thing that they do that uh, the, the laws come down and, uh, and, and ruin it, ruin things for a lot of uh, people that... Um, are doing things in a more of a proper uh, way, so to yeah. speak. You know what I mean? Or uh, well, we start sense way. Yeah, we started this last summer uh, in June because we, we started having some requests from people for transporting water, and it looked like they were going to transport out of the county, not bottled water, but uh, hope, uh, in uh, truckloads. What we're worried about, and, and mm -hmm. if I have a ranch next to somebody so, else okay. who's draining the the groundwater out, um, there's a possibility it could affect springs, wells. Uh, any any other watershed areas, I'd be hmm. concerned about that. So we took a look at this. We looked at what other counties are doing. I think uh, three of the ones I remember are Tuolumne, Calaveras, Napa. But we wanted to know what they're doing, and they do have groundwater ordinances in place. Um, it does allow people that um, that are that have property in two counties, but they're adjacent. Let's say a ranch lies in Calaveras and okay. Amador. They can still, if they're draining, if they're uh, pumping water there, they can use it on the other side. So it allows um, things like that to happen, but we just want to be very careful on this. The way the ordinance is laid out right now, it, it does not appear that a person has to get a use permit if they're going to go in and for the purpose of bottling water, they're going to start taking large amounts of water So are you looking at out. some new ordinance that are coming down from the state? Is that what you're going to be talking about and then no, trying to no. interpret them for people? Uh, no, the state's looked at this and uh, okay. they don't think that um, some of their language really applies here. Um, we The uh, initial groundwater basin prioritization under the statewide groundwater Elevation Monitoring Program. Um, we've talked to the state. We've got, uh, worked with uh, California State Association of Counties, and they've put us in touch with people in the state answering our questions. So this, it, it appears, is more specific back to Amador, but there are, it looks like down the road, there, the counties are going to have to have groundwater ordinances. So this might be the, the first step towards that direction. Uh, it's controlling our own destiny, too, is the way I look at it. Is, uh, we want people to be good neighbors. We don't want, uh, if a person is going to drain a lot of water out of the ground, we don't want them hurting their neighbors. You know, we'll be uh, talking, I think, about the um, state of Jefferson and uh, the gentleman that uh, was talking about it last week was talking about rights. I guess the, the most fundamental of water rights is the, the property owner. Has. I've, I forget what he had called us. Maybe you'll remember that. But anyway, maybe it'll come up. Well, repairing you know, repairing is one repairing water. Right. Well, but e water. even the state is usurping repairing rights right now. Okay. Um, that's that's kind of a scary thing there. Well, that's I mean. a, the discussion we're having about what's happening to the Vicinis out on uh, Well Creek Road. And uh, the state has come in and, and finding them. Um, but in reading the language from the state, it looks like repairing rights are not even sacred anymore. So um, everything's changing because of the drought. The state is taking advantage of it. 
And uh, I'm not sure if you're in the state of California or the state of Jefferson, if that's going to change in the future. It, it, Everybody's worried about water. It, it sounds like to me when I talk to you that the difficulty is, is that uh, you could have a lawsuit, but who's going to come up with the money for the lawsuit? Is that, so, is that the difficulty with getting a good understanding on this issue? For which, uh, for this issue? So, no, I'm sorry. But for, for the state of Jefferson? For, no, <laughs> for riparian rights themselves, or the thing oh. that's happening with the uh, with the vicinities, as you said. Um, what they were told specifically by a lawyer, uh, a high-priced lawyer, probably in the five hundred dollar range an hour, okay. is that uh, frankly you just need to deal with the state, pay the fine because you can't afford me, and it looks like you're probably not going to win that issue anyway against the state water board. Uh, oh, basically, the, the rules are made in favor of the state. Okay. And I think uh, whether you're in the state of California or the state of Texas, the rules are always going to be made in favor of the, the state, I think, especially or, or, as far as something. association of rural counties, how do they uh, stand with that? Are they, uh, are, are they willing to uh, put up some fight? I'm sure they are. In some I think uh, RCRC and CSAC both say you should register your ponds. So, okay. that, is it, that all just, that's required to register them? You register your ponds, and and uh, you know that that's are, what are people the, fearful that is the first step. Well, that's, and then that's what the state follows? farm bureau. The state farm bureau came back okay. with an answer to the Vicinis and anyone else in that situation is get your ponds registered. If they're registered, you're not subject to fine. The state at some point can come in and say um, you're not entitled to that water because they're senior water rights holders, so you have to breach your dams. Um, the state is going to have ultimate authority over something like that, but I think you have more control if you register your dams and pay the, the fees, okay. and now there's a whole new monitoring that's going into place as far as dams where you're going to have to take monthly results and submit them to the state. So it's a different ballgame now. Okay, well, water's always been to fight over. That's right. Uh, area 12 on aging, uh, this is a request from... Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, this is a request from Area 12 on aging that the County of Ambler send uh, letters to the our elected representatives, uh, Congressman McClintock. This just has Senator Boxer. I would send it to Senator Feinstein, too, regarding uh, the Medicare State Health Insurance Assistance Program, or HICAP, what they call... Um, um, okay, and this right. program helps seniors right. on a lot of things. Um, it's what it says specifically is provide assistance with fraud and abuse issues, billing problems, appeal rights, enrollment and low income protection programs. Actually, this probably saves money uh, more than it costs for the federal government. But they're talking about a pretty significant in, uh, decrease here, a 42 percent cut in funding from 52 million to 30 million. That, that is a large uh Cut. Yep. So um, I would expect our board to write a letter here. What I would be interested in, I'd, and what I'm going to suggest is that our state associations, uh, CSAC and RCRC, be asked to give some input as to why this cut is taking place. Is it one senator or a handful of senators that uh, have an issue and uh, have they seen the money not being spent wisely? When you really need to know, get our facts straight before we send a letter and just say, don't okay. do this. All right. A uh, couple other things. Uh, the tree mortality, bark beetle infestation. Um, I indicated at our last Board of Supervisors meeting that I would write a letter, and sometimes you, uh, you regret saying that after it's done, but it took about two hours to put this letter together. Oh, going yeah, through, okay, I got it. Right. Yeah, going through all the information. And uh, I wrote it. I think it's a pretty good letter. I mean, you're taking pieces of the governor's own resolution. Specifically, though, uh, one thing we did ask is that uh, Amler County asked that you remind, and this is to the governor, that you remind your board and commission appointees of your proclamation and that California is facing the worst epidemic of tree mortality in modern history. And uh, what it says is we see somewhat of a cavalier attitude from some of his appointees on those boards. And uh, specifically, again, we cite the um, the state uh, CARB board, California Air Resources Board, which uh, although the governor is talking about the die-off and of trees, how it worsens wildfire risk, and that um, wildfires will release thousands of tons of greenhouse gas emissions, the CARB board failed to include the wild wildfire emissions in their pollution strategy reduction strategy program. Uh, just mind-boggling why these people would, would not include that. But if they include that, they're somewhat 
uh, indicating that um, that wildfires are a big problem, and they don't want to do that. Kind of sounds like a catch twenty two for them that they're in. Well, they they get caught in their own uh, ideology, and they well, they would rather see our force uh, just burn up with no recognition that there's well, a it big is, problem it is a there. Big problem. We had aired the uh, the the uh, uh, video, uh, you know, uh, that you put on at the Board of Supervisors right. from last week, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, I was really impressed with uh, with with. Uh, the loss. I mean, there's there's a lot of areas that are just just wiped it's, out. It's catastrophic. And, and you know, I looked at and, and it's going to be worse. Yeah, I've looked at it even even closer. Some of those pictures since they were shown. Right. If you look at those pictures, what looks like about a 50 percent mortality. If you look really close, that a lot of the trees are already turning. Right. There's about a 70 yeah. percent mortality in many of those areas. So and and so they're guessing it goes from about 45 percent to about 90 percent. Uh, it, it is catastrophic, but the governor's people on his boards and commissions need to take it seriously. I had a Board of Forestry citizen member on the tour when we took it. We have uh, 30 seconds. Okay, I can guarantee they're not taking it seriously. Okay. State of Jefferson, we talked about that pretty much last time. Um, I can tell you all sides are going to be here this time. Okay. The State of Jefferson proponents, the opponents are going to be there. And they're trying to make this a Republican and a Democrat issue. To me, it's not a Republican-Democrat issue. It's much bigger than that. It, it, it doesn't seem to be like that either. But it's uh, quite involved, and in, there's not much uh, information yet mm -hmm. uh, out there. So uh, I'd make that meeting if I were you if you want to find and, out. And that item that. won't be till late. It'll probably be after 11 o'clock. Okay. So thanks, Richard, for coming okay, by. Don't. And uh, uh, thanks for watching. See you again next time on TSPN.